The Horton HX, RLM designation HO-229 was a German prototype fighter, bomber initially designed by Remar and Walter Horton to be built by Gother Wagon Fabric late in World War II. It was the first flying wing to be powered by jet engines. Based on a flying wing, the HO-229 lacked all extraneous control surfaces to lower drag. The German government was funding glider clubs at the time because production of military and even motorized aircraft was forbidden by the Treaty of Versailles after World War I. The flying wing layout removed the need for a tail and associated control surfaces and theoretically offered the lowest possible weight, using wings that were relatively short and sturdy, and without the added drag of the fuselage. The government air ministry approved the Horton proposal, but ordered the addition of two 30mm cannons, as they felt the aircraft would also be useful as a fighter due to its estimated top speed being significantly higher than that of any Allied aircraft. The aircraft utilized retractable tricycle landing gear, with the nose gear on the first two prototypes sourced from a He-177's tailwheel system, with the third prototype using an He-177A main gear wheel rim and tire on its custom-designed nose gear strutwork and wheel fork. A drogue parachute slowed the aircraft upon landing. The aircraft was originally designed for the BMW 003 jet engine, but that engine was not quite ready, and the Junkers Jumo 004 engine was substituted. Flight results were very favorable, but there was an accident when the pilot attempted to land without first retracting an instrument carrying pole extending from the aircraft. Goring believed in the design and ordered a production series of 40 aircraft from Gother Wagon Fabric with the RLM designation HO 229 even though it had not yet taken to the air under jet power. Ziller did not use his radio or eject from the aircraft. The aircraft crashed just outside the boundary of the airfield. In the same month, work commenced on the third prototype, the HO-229 V-3. The V-3 was larger than previous prototypes, the shape being modified in various areas, and it was meant to be a template for the pre-production series HO-229 A zero-day fighters, of which 20 machines had been ordered. Work had also started on the two-seat HO-229 V-4 and HO-229 V-5 night fighter prototypes, the HO-229 V-6 armament test prototype, and the HO-229 V-7 two-seat trainer. A Horton glider and the HO-229 V-3, which was undergoing final assembly, were transported by sea to the United States as part of Operation Seahorse for evaluation. On the way, the HO-229 spent a brief time at Ray Farnborough in the UK, during which it was considered whether British jet engines could be fitted, but the mountings were found to be incompatible with the early British turbojets, which used larger diameter centrifugal compressors as opposed to the slimmer axial flow turbojets the Germans had developed. The only surviving HO-229 airframe, the V-3 and the only surviving World War II-era German jet prototype still in existence has been at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum's Paul E. Garber Restoration Facility in Suitland, Maryland, U.S. In December 2011, the National Air and Space Museum moved the HO-229 into the active restoration area of the Garber Restoration Facility, where it was reviewed for full restoration and display. As of early 2018, the surviving Horton HO-229 has been moved to display in the main hall, alongside other World War II German aircraft. Remar Horton said he intended to mix charcoal dust in with the wood glue to absorb electromagnetic waves, which he believed could shield the aircraft from detection by the British early warning ground-based radar that operated at 20 to 30 MHz, top end of the HF band, known as Chain Home. The jet-powered flying wing design such as the Horton HO-229 has a smaller radar cross-section than conventional contemporary twin-engine aircraft because the wings blended into the fuselage and there are no large propeller discs or vertical and horizontal tail surfaces to provide a typical identifiable radar signature. Northrop Grumman built a full-size non-flying reproduction of the V-3, made out of wood primarily, unlike the original aircraft which had an extensive steel space frame to which the wooden skin was bolted. The space frame for the real aircraft was made from steel tubes up to 160 mm in diameter, and provided the entire structure for the center section of the aircraft. Radar simulations showed a hypothetical HO-229, with the radar characteristics of the mock-up, which had neither metal frame nor engines, approaching the English coast from France flying at 885 km per hour at 15 to 30 meters above the water would have been visible to CH radar at a distance of 80% that of a BF-109 this implies a frontal RCS of only 40% that of a BF-109 at the chain home frequencies.